Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet and on day six of my 100 day project where I turn 100 pieces of junk into 100 plus pieces of treasure, I'm going to make some paint chip tags, a nice straightforward easy project and if you don't have paint chips lying around you can of course just use any card whatsoever and follow along with the tutorial. If you would like some free paint chips then DIY stores are usually giving them away. So definitely ask at your local DIY store. These are the ones I had left over from when we moved house <clears throat> three years ago and it's time to use them up and put them into a journal. I am not, I'd like to state for the record, going to use ink stamps today. I know that's shocking. I, I've thought about it carefully and I think it's the right choice, difficult though it may be. I think I over rely on my ink stamps sometimes. So today I need to find a way of embellishing these tags without my trusty ink stamps. Oh boy, let's see how I get on. First things first, I do actually want these tags to be functional tags that people can write on the back of. Right now, there's a few things in their way. So I'm going to take some Amazon packaging paper and I'm just going to cover the back of these three tags. Okay, they're now covered with brown paper on the back. If I really wanted to, I could um, get a knife into this, an X-Acto knife and go around the edge. But I actually quite like the brown border in the middle there, so I'm just gonna punch through that as near as I can when I make my tag. I'm not going to get rid of that, that little brown detail. Uh, so I'm gonna keep that. Now I'm gonna start with some paints. So this is concept number one. I'm gonna show three different concepts, none of which are using ink stamps. One of them is gonna do some abstract spatters with some paint. And because paint takes a while to dry, I am going to spatter first and then I'll finish this first one when I finish the other two, if that's not too confusing. So we'll spatter first with this and then I will come back to it later and do the finishing touches. Because it's blue, I'm going to use some orange colours and I'm literally just looking to create some contrast. I'm already loving how this is looking. I don't want to move it too far because the spatters will run into each other because it's watercolour, it's very runny. So I'm just going to very gently lift it and put it to one side to dry. And whilst it's drying, I'm going to work on the other two tags and then I'll come back and finish this. But I do love already the effect that I've got here. And it just goes to show you don't actually need much at all, just a bit of paint to create some ephemera. Concept number two this is still a shade of blue, but it's actually quite pale. And I thought I would actually just have a go with some washi tape that is all themed around the ocean or water and just see what patterns I can create. Let me have a little play and see what comes out of this. So what I like about this is it almost looks like a washi sample unto itself. It enables you to sort of catalogue, in a way, the washi tapes that you have enjoyed using. So I do like how it creates a sort of sample card of your washi tapes. The third concept is a uh, is similar idea, but with paper. I'll show you that shortly. But I think for now, this works quite well as a sort of lovely themed sample card that's also a workable tag uh, for your journal with a back that you can write on. So it's doing double duty in some respects. It is reminding you of the lovely washi tapes you've owned and used over the years. And it's also a functional place to write. It is also prettying up your journal, and making it look beautiful. So it's doing a lot of different things at once. I had a bit of a casualty with one of my eyelets there. Just pull it out, try again. It does happen. Now that I've got to this stage, it's looking like a proper tag and I just need to find something to weave through the top of it and also ink around it as well. And I think that will make for a nice finishing touch to this cute little tag. Going to stick with the blue theme and put some blue ribbon through the top. 
I could have done a contrast with some orange ribbon if I wanted to, kind of picking out these kind of colours here, but I, as it happens, I don't have any orange ribbon. It is a gap in my collection. <laughs> so we're going to go with blue because I believe in using what you have. I didn't need to buy some new ribbon just to do this. There we go. That is looking very cute now. Um, I might just trim that at the top. find with this uh, silkier ribbon I need to tie a knot at the top of a tag in order to secure it otherwise it just starts slipping out. Not sure if any of you have had the same issue but that definitely has happened on a few of my projects so I just now I just always tie a discrete knot so that it stays where it is. Right we'll just get some ink around the edge of this and then we're done. So it is just the slightest hint around the edges actually quite difficult to pick out on camera but in real life it is possible to see that the edges are now orangey uh, just very faintly and I think that just ties in nicely with this colour I've used here. So that is one concept, um, really it's concept number two because of course we've done our paint spattering but it is just layering that washi tape up and putting a topper and a bit of ink around and you've got a tag. Let's try a third concept. <laughs> so I really like how that last tag acted as a bit of a washi sample. And I've seen some images on Pinterest of people who use tags in a similar way, but with paper. And not just any paper, but tiny little paper scraps that are from old projects that you don't know what to do with. I think that these can look quite lovely, rearranged strategically on one of these tags and actually so those three are quite neutral I'm going to do a fourth one that's a bit of a wild card it is essentially a piece of collage paper that I handmade so that's a lovely little sample of some of the vintage papers that I've used in my projects recently and also some collage paper that I made myself what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cursory amount of glue down. So it really is just a cursory amount of glue. I've left the corners sticking up. And the reason is at the end of this project, I am going to uh, go across both of these with my sewing machine for an extra piece of detail. This is me trying to use the things in my craft room that don't get as much use of my ink stamps or my stencils, which I always reach for. So I'm pushing the boat out today, people. I hope you appreciate it. So I'm just going to run this through my sewing machine and then I'll be back to the top and some ink around the edge. I really love how this turned out. I just put a little bit of seam binding through the top. I found my peacock feathers distress ink whilst I was upstairs with my sewing machine and decided that I would put that around the edges and I even put it around the edges of the first tag that I made just for a bit more drama. I just think this is such a lovely way of sampling the paper that you are using in your journal whilst also having a place to write and thanks to the sewing machine you've even got two lines to write across so I think that works out quite nicely. Okay. So, so far we've finished these two tags. Let's go to our third, or if you like, our first tag that I did, where I just spattered it with orange paint and I just love how this has dried. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm gonna do the finishing touches now. So it really didn't like the eyelet in this one. <laughs> this must be something about the paper I've used to back it. It's just not sturdy enough. When I pulled this very thick ribbon through, it just came out. So I just decided not to have an eyelet in this one. And I don't think it looks really any worse for it. I did just tear up some washi tape in some orange yellow colors to disperse across the pink splatters. But that is all I've done apart from ink around. And I think this serves as 
a, a cute, you know, legitimate addition to a junk journal. So just to take you through the three concepts that we have done today, we've got the washi strips with just a little bit of ribbon. We've got the paper sample tag, again with just a little bit of seam binding at the top. And we've got literal just paint splatters and a tiny bit of washi. The washi was optional. I didn't really have to add it. I just can't help myself, to be honest. The, the paint on the paint chip would have been enough with just some ribbon through it. So I do think that these paint chips make for good backing for cards. But obviously you can use any card that you've got in your stash. I hope that these three very simple concepts give you some ideas about how you could work with your stash today and do something perhaps a little bit different from usual. I'd just like to note that when I did this paper one here with the samples, you could obviously take off cuts of your ribbon or lace and you could do a sample card with your lace. I don't really think you need a sewing machine either. I think you could staple these in and it would still have a really amazing kind of utilitarian look to it. So those are my ideas for the paint chips this week. I hope you found it interesting and inspiring. I can't tell you how relaxing it is just sitting with my materials whilst pushing myself to use some different things in my stash. I can categorically say that no ink stamps were used in the making of these ephemera. <laughs> um, thank you so much for all the likes and subscribes and comments. I really appreciate your support and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.